on to the final session for today and the last session is handled by dr k sasireka assistant professor of english the american college madurai tamil nadu india and uh, she has completed her phd in elt from madurai kamaraj university and she has uh, teaching experience over nearly 20 years she has published uh, 10 journals and presented 17 papers and she has also published uh, two book chapters and uh, she has uh, attended and organized many workshops and seminars we are very happy to have you among us ma'am passing on the session over to you uh, uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, it's my pleasure addressing the participants from different parts of the world uh, on the general topics, soft skills and uh, uh, related to things. Uh, and I thank the uh, Lavender Literary Club also for giving me this opportunity to address the participants across the world. Uh, now, let me present my session on the topic uh, Resume preparation, resume writing and interview skills. Uh, could someone tell that whether the screen is getting shared or not? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, so the top first. Yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, let me start the presentation on the topic resume writing and interview skills. Uh, and I believe the earlier sessions would also have given you a uh, kind of different inputs about soft skills, uh, leadership qualities, and other things. Uh, this is going to be a little different uh, since it's going to talk about resume writing and inter interview skills. Uh, see, as far as job preparedness, uh, here I would like to highlight uh, four components which we have to develop uh, ourselves as an individual well, before uh, uh, start applying for jobs uh, or the way to get ready for job is to make a self-analysis when i say self-analysis whether my qualification is uh, appropriate to apply for this job uh, how good am i with my communication skills my soft skills my managerial skills my life skills uh, like that uh, uh, we have to make a kind of self-analysis and uh, the career credentials, uh, my credit, uh, career strength, weakness, uh, what am I good about, what am I weak about, uh, all these things, uh, I just termed it as self-analysis. Uh, to put it uh, in short, we could say that uh, the career strength and career weakness, we are not just bringing uh, the uh, life, or else uh, the except career, we are not uh, thinking anything here in the name of self-analysis. Revisit your personality. When I say revisit your personality, the thing which I mean over here is definitely the outlook integrated with the other uh, uh, behavior also. Uh, see, before we present ourselves in a place before we speak our appearance speaks so uh we we are we are expected to have a appropriate uh, personal outlook see for example we should know how to pick up ourselves for different occasions like official then casual uh, that that's what i mean over here as uh, revisit your personality Sim uh, in a simple term we can call it as how to make a self grooming then new eight skills uh, that is uh, uh, everybody is now aware it is all about communication skills soft skills uh, and then computer skills also and uh, instead of computer skills now we can uh, make it as even uh, uh, mobile navigation also all these things have become a kind of new age skills and job as far as job is concerned 
the job market expects a go setter a goal setter not someone who comes with so many excuses or who talks about limitations this and that so uh, in uh, simply job preparedness is self analysis there as an individual every participant is expected to make uh, your analyze your own strength and weakness and how you are prepared to take up a job in different levels then revisit your personality it is not uh, about uh, how good or how beautiful it's not that way but how appropriate our personality uh, with the official outlook see nowadays uh, people talk about power dressing uh, as a kind of uh, soft skill so this is what i mean by revisit your personality the grooming self grooming the new age skills there are many skills the focus for the foundation for any job or any position is communication skills then soft skills uh, and here what we mean by communication skill is apart from our mother tongue the english language skills uh, that's what uh, uh, communication skills we mean over here and uh, life skills or soft skills whatever name we wanted to give we can have uh, for new age skills uh, along with that uh, either a computer uh, uh, either a computer skills uh, computing or else mobile navigation and be a go setter is in the sense uh, uh, though we have uh, limitations uh, though we have weakness uh, instead of uh, uh, we focusing more about our negatives our weakness we are expected to be a go setter uh, on these element only the presentation is going to be proceeded to the uh, participants and uh, since it talks about say when it is a kind of uh, uh, job preparation i set about some four qualities uh, that that has to be developed as a kind of habit and along with that we are expected to get ready with a few more papers also uh, to appear for interview so uh, now the focus is more towards what is a resume and why resume we go uh, we got different names to talk about resume is a cv curriculum vitae profile otherwise resume here there is a small uh, kind of intake for the participant uh, don't call uh, you s u m e as resume it is resume when you say resume the pronunciation means uh, the verb which you stop somewhere you are going to continue it's a verb and the meaning is something else when it is resume we talk about the testimonial personal uh, uh, testimonial so the resume here we'll include a summary of our skills abilities and accomplishments so that the testimonial uh, which we call it a cv or resume or uh, uh, biodata sometimes profile going to be a kind of uh, document which talks about our skills abilities and accomplishments and uh, uh, we should give a space for our personal propaganda also personal propaganda in the sense uh, all our credential has to be highlighted over there a snapshot not an autobiography so when we are expected to prepare the resume it shouldn't be very lengthy or and at the same time it should not cut down the details uh, hence i named it as it shouldn't be a snapshot it should be a, uh, it should be a snapshot and not an autobiography uh maybe again uh uh, uh, uh to shortlist uh, to know your credentials and your eligibility so just before maybe you alma already you might be Uh, working somewhere or you might be in a job hunt or soon you might take job whatever it may be this session will make you to understand how resume has to be prepared and how important it is uh, when it comes to 
when you want to showcase your skills in a job market and uh, the elements to be added in our resume nowadays uh, there is a one pager also one pager is a technical term we use to uh, uh, give for a very short uh, cv of ourselves uh, how whether it is a short one or a longer one in spite of that these are the basic components to be included in a resume or else a one pager also photograph contact details uh, the educational qualification academic credentials extracurricular hobbies personal details reference acknowledgement without leaving any uh, any of these element both the detailed resume and the one pager has to be prepared and uh, uh, when you want to prepare your resume there is a word of caution comes over here uh, there are plenty of uh, templates available online and resume wizards also available. And uh, when you may get tempted to use any one template which is readily available on the online, kindly don't do that. I'll just explain why it shouldn't be a kind of copied resume. Um, see, when you... Uh, uh try to use a resume template which is available uh, in online has been prepared with a specific kind of software that is not going to be helpful of uh, uh, for your cv and uh, there is a technically technically uh the so there is a kind of software application tracking software many of the corporates are using that to uh, filter the applications and to filter the cv when it is when ats has been involved as a kind of a screener to uh, shortlist the candidates or to shortlist the cv that will reject the CV which has been used, which has used the online templates. Uh, see, this is a kind of a caution, and you could also check it if you have friends or uh, contacts working in a corporate. So then you must be. Uh, then you will come to know about application tracking software. Even you can Google it as well, and. Uh, so what I, then how we can prepare our resume? It's very simple. Instead of uh, thinking of a high-end profile available on online, you can see those as models. You can see definitely you are allowed to see those models. We can uh, get ideas from that. We can uh, use the words used in the, those uh, res uh, templates. But we are expected to prepare something, a very simple, a simple document in MS Word. And uh, the, when we use the online available CV template, employers will easily identify that it's not our original resume that has been copied from or it has been uh, uh, derived from the online source. When it is derived from the online source, it is not a, a very big prime. But as I said, technically speaking, your CV will not be uh, shortlisted. And uh, the simple thing, the simple technical detail, what I can add over here is this ATS, you can check it a little later. Uh, since this is not a hands-on training, I'm just uh, hinting you what is ATS. This ATS uh, even will not accept so many lines like a horizontal, vertical. Uh, the template would have so many horizontal, vertical lines, uh, bars sometime. So what you will be doing is we will be filling our details inside those columns. That will... Uh, that will this uh, software will easily detect that has been on that's why i'm telling repeatedly insisting that we can rely so
your name could be given over there mail id and mobile number when you think of giving your mobile id uh, sorry your email id let it not have any super characters or superscripts or uh, special characters like uh, dot hyphen uh, those things uh, because uh, uh, the default setting in any computer is when we type a mail id it will get highlighted with underline so if you use underscore or dot, uh, there might be a kind of mistake. Hence, go for very professional maybe without using any active over there. The simple form is our, our initial copy of our name. Of that will to generate our maybe not at different other things. Then the another important area in any resume is career objective. Career objective templates also available in the online sources. And uh, I believe now you remember the very beginning of this presentation, I talked about job preparedness, self-analysis. When you make a self-analysis, you will have a, a set of keywords about yourself. Like I am good at negotiation. Uh, my flair of English is very strong. And I know additional, langu additional foreign languages. Uh, I am very weak i am i am i feel shy to mingle with the new set of people like that you would have identified your strength and weakness let's keep our weakness aside and let's prepare our career objective as a combination of uh, our technical the technical skill which you possess and the life skill you possess and as far as this presentation is concerned, let's make one point very clear. If I mention life skill or soft skill, it all talks about employability skill only. Like uh, uh, example, uh, you may be uh, very uh, good at uh, comprehension or else uh, uh, you may be a wonderful team player or you might be uh, good at taking decision all those things we call it as employability skill technical skill is based on your domain based on your domain you must be knowing uh, in which field you're strong at that you could think of as technical skill so the career objective the samples you could always check it in different sources but you please prepare your own career objective that should be the combination of your technical skills plus your soft skills. Then as academic, then then comes the next item that is academic profile. The academic profile is where you will mention about the uh, names of your degree, where you study, the marks you scored, the when uh, when did you complete the course, all those details. Uh, when you prepare this academic profile let that be in a, uh, a reverse chronological order reverse chronological order is nothing but from the latest to the uh, to the old one uh, the the degree which you pursued uh, uh, the way as a last one should be given priority like uh, in my case it is phd then mphil then ma then ba uh, 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 plus two HSC, then SSLC, it goes that way. And if you have additional qualification, that could also come in the, um, uh, in the, you prioritize, you prioritize. If you feel that course which you have taken as an additional course is very important, then you bring it to the top. So you always can customize. See, uh, here and all, we are allowed to use simple table to uh, make our uh, um, a, 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 what is that academic profile educational qualification uh, that the software will accept instead if there is a template uh, for a uh, already and if you feed your details over there 
the software will detect it and it will not accept there are companies there are companies i don't say that all companies will reject your resume if you use it from the online but it is a kind of alert what i can give from my experience uh, it's a hint it's a hint for you to start preparing your own resume using a simple uh, uh, facility available in the computer so here we can insert a table accordingly and we can make our tabular column for every academic profile then job profile here you could talk about the experience if you're a fresher then you could mention that then if you have a prior experience then the uh, tabular column can go this way serial number name of the company the designation how long you work to work there uh, the from to number of years and uh, 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 since uh, we i work as a teacher uh, based on my uh, uh, based on my uh, domain i just gave a sample like paper presentation workshops attended if you are not from uh, teaching side and if you are from industry side you can very well remove paper presentation workshops attended instead you can talk about your projects internship attended then achievements award scholarships this is applicable for both the industrialists and academicians and computer knowledge has become mandatory nowadays so whatever skill you possess as far as computing is concerned there you are expected to mention it industrial versus the places where you the industry the, the industry which you visit during your studies or during your project that the names should uh, should be given over there and in plant training nowadays uh, almost uh, while studying irrespective of the degree all students are expected to have some in plant training so provide details over there and your strengths if you are not feeling comfortable providing strengths absolutely no problem you could remove that element and uh, then comes a personal profile there we will be giving our uh, personal details like name date of birth our marital status uh, nationality languages known hobbies address references then the declaration is a, a kind of a standing instruction uh, for any resume we have to close it with this declaration and the place your signature here and uh, uh, there is one more tip over here as far as the hobbies concerned uh, don't get tempted to use uh, hobbies like listening music or watching tv or reading books that this that what we do it with passion where we uh, how much uh, when we put our energy and our quality time that particular thing we can call it as a hobby uh, just to while away the time we watch television so that you cannot bring it under your hobby whereas for gardening you will spend your energy you will spend your quality time your passion about uh, and you care about that particular thing so gardening you can mention it as your hobby whereas if you play cricket you could make uh, uh, playing cricket or bowling or fielding that is a hobby instead if you are good at watching cricket matches you cannot mention watching cricket matches as your hobby and uh, all of us watch movies so movie watching movies cannot be brought under hobbies but you may be a film reviewer you might have blogs or you might have blogs or a movie uh, of something of like that then you can make that kind of thing as your hobbies and always there is a danger when you write uh, reading as your hobbies then naturally there would be a question based on what's your favorite genre uh, uh, then this and that so unless you read unless you practice something unless which you don't do in real life don't bring it as hobbies rather swimming uh, definitely uh, stamp collection 
uh, kitchen garden, cooking, uh, and uh, blogging, blogging, all those things, hobbies. So understand physical energy and quality time uh, for what we spend that could be mentioned as hobbies, not the one. There are a list of things uh, to while away our time uh, that cannot be brought under hobby. And present address and permanent address sometime both the same. In that case, you could remove any these titles. It is not, uh, again, a hard and fast rule. And uh, declaration, this is um, very mandatory for any resume. And uh, before declaration, there is a title called references. While giving references, make sure uh, see they would be definitely talking to those people about your credibility uh, so someone who can give you uh, give a uh, good word about you those uh, those details could be given under references uh, if your if your uh, uh, boss is uh, knows about you very well then you could give your immediate boss as your reference you no know, if you're a fresher then where you studied your head of the department or your project guide likewise we can choose references and while giving references the details should be complete like official address the name the signation the work detail the contact detail mobile number and other thing uh, and see this is going to this is the company or the place where we are going to apply would definitely make a call to reference so the person whom we are mentioning over our resume as references shouldn't blink why do i get a get a call who is that person then that shouldn't be the it will spoil it will spoil the opportunity so get a consent if you are going to use your project guide uh, contact details as a reference uh, put a word to your project guide uh, if you are going to use your team leader as one of the references get a consent uh, sir this is uh, see i'm just uh, i would like to continue to use as uh, your your details uh, for my references shall i uh, so you may and alert the references also I started applying for jobs and I started getting call letters also. So anytime from any firm, you may get a uh, call kindly. Uh, remember that I have given your details for my references. This is a very basic courtesy. Uh, this also will come under job preparedness, I would say. Then declaration, finally, the final component, this is mandatory. Uh, I hereby declare that the above furnished details are true to the best of my knowledge and belief. Uh, the standard statement all of us can use, or if you feel that you wanted some addition or deletion over here, absolutely okay. But see to that, uh, it's a kind of uh, self-assurance that in our resume, we haven't manipulated any of the self-details. That's what we mean over here. It is little ethical also. This is something uh, uh, talks about human values. So unless you don't possess something, uh, don't bring it in your resume. Uh, that will spoil the whole of your career. And uh, it's, uh, it's not an exaggerated one. This is the fact. Yes. So... Uh, now you just aware of uh, uh, the basic uh, uh, resume preparation. The trending resume module nowadays is video resume. Uh, they are started asking for a short uh, uh, video resume, which runs a second. Here, let me add uh, uh, a kind of a trivia. See, uh, how many seconds of, uh, our WhatsApp status can accept uh, uh, the video uh, when you want to post it in your status? Could someone tell me how many seconds are allowed? How many seconds are allowed in our WhatsApp status uh, for a video? It's 30 seconds. the question? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, Yes, sir. 
yes all right uh, uh, that is 30 seconds uh, which means uh, which means your video resume if you are uh, ready if you are going to if you are the, if the company insists you to submit a video resume you just think of preparing a 30 seconds video resume about yourself and uh, once again uh, probably uh, these links uh, after some time i just posted uh, by the end of the session or uh, 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 when there is a, a feedback session let me post those hyperlinks in the chat box uh, there you can check for modules for video resume and other thing and uh, remember it is not just uh, it is resume is not just a paperwork it has become a kind of uh, uh, uh video resume uh, or else uh, self introduction could also be a kind of uh, uh what is that uh, a motion picture has that has been very trending nowadays in industry and of course uh, uh we nowadays uh, more than some 20 years back supercomputer in us uh, is uh, capable of uh, doing what the android phones at present we are using there is no difference between the supercomputers in two decades before in us and the android phones what we are using nowadays uh, so there are several mobile apps uh, for uh, various uh, with various features and uh, with various functions uh, all of us can uh, check out uh, resume app that is an app that is an app actually uh, helps you to prepare your resume and uh, that uh, that will give you some idea about uh, how it has to be prepared and uh, all right so we just imagine this way your uh, sorry why just uh, yes uh, now just we'll assume that uh, the one part of the preparation is over that is resume preparation then the next part is attending the interviews so this part of my presentation would be on interview manners the first part of the presentation talks about uh, resume preparation and uh, the various components to be included in our uh, resume preparation and this part of the presentation is going to focus on interview manners so the interview manners what i highlighted over here is know the company know your job dress neatly be punctual be clear with your communication present confidently show positive attitude uh, these are the basics of these are the basics of interview and this you have to develop as a habit or as, as well as a manners also. Uh, if you are going to apply or if you are going to attend interview, you must know about the company, who is the founder, um, uh, the board members. Nowadays, almost all the companies would have their own websites. Without a website, they are not at all starting any of the company. So before applying, before attending the interview, as much as much details as possible about the company know your job also over there what is uh, for what designation you have applied over here and uh, uh, what sort of uh, job culture provided over there work culture all those things you are expect so so that you could uh, make a kind of uh, already there is a self analysis so you can just make a few calculations uh, whether the work culture prevailing over in that particular company will suits your nature or not uh, only for that uh, your and what sort of a salary uh, you could get uh, what are the other benefits privileges perks uh, all these things uh, will come under know your job dress neatly uh, what I mean neatly over here, it is not about a branded uh, uh, costume or branded uh, uh, blazer, suit or uh, this and that. Modestly, we are expected to dress a very clean and uh, pressed dress, which should be, uh, see, uh, power dressing 
is a uh, uh, it's one of the important employability skills and it is one of the important soft skills also to make you understand uh, what does this dress neatly based on my experience how it could be explained as in a very simple way is once you done with your dressing you shouldn't be cautious about what you are wearing you shouldn't be cautious about uh, 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 about adjusting it often if you are dress conscious if you are not then it shows that you are not comfortable with that outfit which means you you that dress is not appropriate to you or you would have tried something very new so if an outfit makes you cautious if a outfit makes you shy if an uh, if a uh, outfit makes you a little anxious then understand definitely that outfit is not for yours so dress neatly here uh, is modest dressing uh, it it varies from uh, places to place person to person however uh, globally wherever we work wherever we born uh, how we dress ourselves matters as far as official affairs concern so you just think about it and bring that as a kind of dress uh, 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 grooming culture you are you are expected to develop punctual punctual is not just about uh, giving rest on time it is about a kind of a commitment towards the time sense so always be uh, ahead um, uh, plan well you schedule your timeline in such a way so that uh, you would reach the place earlier you would have a relaxation you would have a breathing phase you could get familiar with the official setup that and all will um, ease out your anxiety uh, so that's what i mean by be punctual be, uh, be clear with communication it is not just about what you are going to speak. It is not a, you receive the questions uh, instead of in a hurry to give a reply, receive, understand, then respond to the question. It's not that you are expected to give a reply. Yes, uh, uh, reply with respons responsibility. That is more important. That's what I mean by clear with communication. Present yourself confidently. When we dress up properly, definitely it will psychologically we feel confident. So in such a way, make yourself and present yourself confidently. Show positive attitude here a little uh, think about our body language also uh, when we sit when uh, when a place is offered for us to sit when a seat is offered for us to sit sit by occupying the chair uh, um, properly and your back rest on it should be inclined to the chair backside of the sofa or the backside the back rest should be the back should rest properly on the back side of the uh, chair or else the sofa wherever you are going to sit and uh, that and all will make a positive attitude don't fold your hands or don't keep lean your arms on the table uh, that and all will give you a kind of reluctant look instead uh, you just uh, make yourself comfortable with the uh, certain postures and show positive attitude no a long or greasy or dull face you could have uh, 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 the best makeup the whole world suggests is a smile so the smile will make you uh, give you the impression that you are so confident about uh, presenting yourself these things are the uh, most important thing which comes under interview manners and uh, the next part of the slide i'm just going to tell what are the frequently asked questions and how are we expected to give our answers as far as interview is concerned see any interview at any day even just before the day of retirement if you are expected to uh, get an uh, in uh, promotion or else if you are going to apply for a new job 
the first question you are going to have is tell me about yourself. Uh, you just, uh, we wanted to know about yourself. Could you give a self introduction? This is the different question. This is the different way they are asking us to talk about yourself. So the possible answers I have given as a sample over here, always you just take these things as example and you think of your own self introduction. I'm really energetic and a great communicator working in sales for two years, helped me to build confidence and taught me the importance of customer loyalty is one sample answer for tell me about yourself. See, I didn't include the names and other things over here since it is default. All of us will start with our name and other things. See, this is the way we are expected to make our career self-introduction, the name but uh, uh, not the other uh, personal details like uh, uh, family details, uh, this and that. Talk more about your uh, career. I'm punctual, dependable, can be counted upon to finish what I started. I understand my customers' needs. I consider myself a hardworking, reliable, dependable. Yes, this is what... We mean by tell me about yourself. All right. So the next question, the next question is, where do you, this is also often you would face in the interview process. Where do you see yourself in three to five years from now? Are the possible answers, the sample answers, of what I picked out for you is, although it is hard to predict the future, I sincerely believe that I will become a very good financial consultant. I believe that my abilities will allow me to excel to the point they can, I can seek other opportunities as portfolio manager and possibly even higher. In five years, I see myself as a valued employee of a company. I want to be an expert at my position and start training to a manager. My goal is to become a lead in five years. Although not everyone gets promoted to this level, I believe I can achieve this goal through hard work. So this is another uh, standard question which we can expect in any interview. Like where do you see yourself in the next five years? Future, those things. All right. So make your point. You just prepare yourself that way. Then job interview. Uh, sorry, the next question would be like, uh, what are you currently doing? Uh, then you have to say it this way. My work is important to me. So instead of rushing to accept the first thing that comes my way, I'm taking my time and being selective to make sure my next role is the right one, which means uh, you right now you are not taking up any job and you are waiting for a job. All right, that's what you mean over here. What are you currently doing? The first sample is you are not uh, uh, working or you are not aligned with any of the company. That very positively you are telling that just like that, I didn't accept any offer. I'm just waiting. I am so selective and waiting for the right position. And the next sample answer is I'm working on several freelancer projects while actively job seeking. Then uh, uh, the next answer, I'm spending time being a stay-at-home mom and volunteering at my daughter's school. See, this happens with the uh, most of the time with the female candidates. Uh, at the time of marriage, there would be a kind of a break in their service. Then after a childbirth, there would be another uh, uh, stay back. Then uh, sometimes uh, with the toddler, still they reach the school there is going to be a short break. So this could be one simple uh, answer. The female candidates, if you take up, uh, there is a break in the middle, can think of. Then uh, I'm taking some continuing education classes and seminars. So like this, uh, as per your uh, 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 position, uh, requisition, you can think of different possible answers for this question these questions and the next uh, question probably might be what are your weakness 
what are your weakness uh, this also uh, in any interview we cannot avoid uh, so i have uh, the possible answers is answers so i have never been very comfortable with public speaking which as, as you know can be hindrance in the workplace realizing this was a problem i asked my previous employer if i could enroll in a speech workshop he said yes i took the class was able to overcome my lifelong fear since then i have given lots of presentation to audience of over 100 level high level executives i still don't love it but no one else can tell see this is the way you are expected to make uh, present your weakness uh, but it has been a kind of modified weakness uh, you realize you were not as an individual someone realized that public speaking is not his cup of tea is his or her cup of tea but he or she enrolled in a workshop special workshop trained herself or himself and at present uh, uh, started giving many, many presentations to different sectors, uh, to different level of uh, executives, uh, and the audience uh, ranges from uh, uh, low profile people to high level executive. Still, still, the inside, uh, there is a kind of uh, 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 unhappiness or discomfort while making public speaking. So that is one of the weakness of a candidate but just see how the answer has been given to uh, to the interview panel and the next sample answer is i had troubles in the past with planning and prioritization however now i'm now taking steps to correct this i just started using a pocket planner yes uh, this is also another practical question and a practical solution. Earlier, I do not know how to organize myself. As an individual, uh, there were pitfalls, there were slight slips and falls while uh, executing the things. Later, a simple packet plan, a planner helped me to plan and prioritize my assignments. So now that's no more my weakness that is another possible answer you could think of for your weakness then i might need to learn to be more flexible when things are not going according to plan this is something i'm working on at that moment all right this is this is uh, uh something uh, uh we all have to think about Yes, certain things, uh, if you are not comfortable, uh, we won't be uh, adoptable, flexible. So that also, how polishedly, how diplomatically you present your weakness, that matters in the interview. And now just we are moving to the next slide, which talks about what are your strains and the possible sample answers for it. I believe my strongest triad is my attention to detail. Detailing is your strength, maybe your strength. Then this is a sample answer you can think of while giving in the interview. This triad has helped me tremendously in this field of work. Then I have always been a great team player and good at keeping a team together and producing quality work in a team environment i'm an adaptable person i work for three different management styles and expectations of me i'm unable to adjust my approach to meet each of their needs so, so the third person is a very adaptable person so that he or she present as his or her strength the second person is a very team player so he talks about team spreads the first person is good at uh, detailing so that is the way he or she presented the answers so the third part of this presentation is all about the frequently asked questions and answers by that we end up the presentation and uh, now i am open now the floor is open to ask queries based on the uh, presentation i made earlier Thanks for the opportunity, and I'm ready to take up your questions now. Yeah, ma'am, could you hear my voice, please? Uh, come again, sir. Sorry. 
Sir, uh, ma'am, uh, nice uh, to hear you speaking, but I uh, got a sincere question uh, on your latest part when you are talking about the weakness. Why if the question is being asked that what are all your weakness? If you, somebody could reflect on that, uh, it's nicely tackled by you. But what I feel that uh, the question is not answered properly. If the individual is asking that what are the weakness, then we are supposed to reply what what is the weakness we are possessing as of now. Whereas your reply submits here that we had some weakness, but we tried out this, and now the weakness exists no more. Could you kindly clarify about this one? Because we are not talking, we are not replying the question as just being thrown by the employer or so. If you could kindly please. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, you feel, uh, see, what I understand is, uh, you feel that how the weakness should be reflected. That's, am I right with my understanding? Uh, no, ma'am. It's not my exact the question. What I mean to say that what's our reply have been so so uh, so far the template replies have been reflected from our end is that the weakness was there in past, but now we have got some remedy for those weaknesses and the weakness is not existing as of now. So does that reply the question of the employer? That's what my question is, please. All right, all right. Uh, see, uh, but that uh, there are going to be some standard questions, and we are expected to answer those questions. There is no pass button for orals uh, uh, kind of thing for uh, answering such questions. Uh, so there are remedial. There are remedies for our weakness. You are very right. You are correct about it. Still how we present our weakness in a diplomatic way how we make con how we make the interview panel convincing that our weakness is no more a weakness that has been turned as a strength that is the way i am asking you to practice uh, uh, to answer in different interviews am i am i convincing sir oh thanks ma'am for that but what do you feel that what we are supplying is the question to the answer. Uh, this is the answer to the question that had you been having any weakness which you could uh, overcome over a period of time successfully. I think we are replying to that question here. Instead of replying to the question, what are all the weaknesses do you feel do you have right now? Are you asking me, sir, about my personal weakness uh, or? No, ma'am, I'm not asking you about your personal weakness. But what I'm saying, if an employer puts a question that what are the weaknesses you feel you do you have, that I think we are supposed to tell what what's your weakness we do have right now. Not about the weakness we had once upon a time. And All now right. we, we overcome. That, that, that's right. what the humble question is. All right. All right. I understand. So uh, we are expected to talk about existing weakness, not about the past weakness. Uh, that's what you mean to say. All right, all right. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, uh, someone has raised the hand. Uh, yes, what's the question? Yes, I could take up the next question. There is no questions. Okay. Wait, uh, I, I have. Hello, ma'am. Okay. Excuse yes, me. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a question. Okay. Yes, Do we really yes, need yes. Uh, to convince the interviewers or uh, we have to say, speak the truth? Uh, what do you think? Come again, sir. Uh, as we know, uh, as uh, teachers of uh, English or uh, uh, teachers belong to any other subject uh, we have to move uh, from institute uh, one institute to another uh, yes. due to various reasons okay in the interview panel when you are when we are approaching any interview panel whether we have to say the truth or we have to convince uh, the interviewers what would be the right thing do you think uh, sir it depends on person to person and uh, yes, yes, the work culture of different places also sure, uh, sure, so sure. you you are the master to decide on that part and Definitely always uh, the advantage of telling the truth is uh, uh, we need not cook up a story 
So yes, always sure, that sure. is a very, very big advantage when we have the habit of telling the truth. Uh, sure. So I believe, I believe people uh, will take up that in a right sense. Uh, yes, uh, if the reason is uh, very honest. Uh, and uh, so and another thing is how we present the truth. Uh, that also matters. Uh, is a, uh, there is a saying you no know, when i present a truth it has three sides which is one is mind side the other one is opponent side and there is going to yes. be the third side so how you project the truthfulness that matters but uh, that's the, the simplest way is uh, instead of cooking up so many stories and if you are not good at uh, and at at one point if you feel that you have to cut a sorry figure then it is simple to take truth in your hand that's what i feel yes thank you ma'am thank you i have one more question sure sir okay uh, uh, to your uh, students uh, what uh, type of uh, uh, resume or uh, cv do you recommend uh, because uh, for outgoing students uh, whether uh, do you recommend them to uh, prepare for a cv or a resume which one works better from your experience? Uh, so both the terminology is similar, right? Whether yes. it is a CV or a resume, both have a similar uh, template. So uh, nothing wrong in that. But in addition to paper resume, please uh, let's let's uh, educationers or uh, over uh, wherever we work let's be aware of the trending resume pattern that is a video pattern whatsapp resume companies started asking for whatsapp resume so let's be aware of video resume okay ma'am thank you very much uh, really it was a wonderful session uh, really it was uh, very good and uh, we got we gain a lot thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you good so evening much. madam Yes, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I have one question. Uh, yes, if uh, the interviewer asked the candidate to ask any question, what type of questions a candidate should ask the interviewer? Uh, yeah, see, by the flow of conversation only, we can decide on that part. But a kind of a stark question, what we can have in our mind is uh, 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 that work uh, duration i mean uh, the office hours at what time i have to report at what time i have to leave or uh, what would uh, when can i get uh, uh, what is that uh, kind of uh, the next promotion level or else uh, 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 the other possible stock question could be like uh, uh, the salary part uh, salary and other benefits uh, these are the stark questions which we can uh, have in our mind and uh, when the chance permits we can accordingly ask any one of these questions so naturally that would lead to other questions and we will have we can arrive at some clarity regarding our pay uh, our scale of pay or else uh, the working hours this and that naturally that would be we are anxious about when we take up a job whether we have to work on holidays or extra hours if i work extra hours will they be paid or will they not be accounted those questions will they be in our mind so that depend depending upon the situation you could raise any of these questions is that okay ma'am ah, thank you thank you ma'am should we say uh, i don't have any questions ma'am uh, uh, why should any, uh, should any candidate uh, uh, should any candidate say uh, no sir i don't have any questions or uh, is it compulsory to ask any question exactly not like that but uh, definitely there would be see we have a hesitation to you to ask question that's why we say uh, we don't have any questions uh, maybe if they have given you uh, all the information from A to Z, then we would say that there is no question to ask. But definitely, definitely, uh, there would be uh, some questions in our mind. But we hesitate to ask out. If there is an opportunity, 
uh, they are not going to penalize the candidate by asking a question. And also, your questioning is another art. In such a way, we are going to ask the question uh, and get reply from the interview panel. And if it has been given assurance in the inter uh, interview panel itself, that is something like a return document. Uh, why should we miss the opportunity? Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, good afternoon from Ghana. My name is Howen Ibrahim. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, it's it's, yes. it's very, very healthy and very meticulous, well outlined presentation. I have learned quite a lot from your presentation today on resume. Thank you. Um, yes. My question is, interview comes with dynamics. You can plan yes. it and then during, during the interview, something can happen and you have to change your dynamics. So it's very, very, very dynamic. It, you, you, you don't go with a plan A. It can change at any time. Mommy, as an interviewee, you have been interviewed by an interview panel. When they ask you a question pertaining your salary, that how much are you wealth off? How should you go um, by that question? See, uh, if I have to uh, say regarding my salary part, a uh, few components I have to check the position which I have applied and whether the particular management is capable of the of paying that salary and definitely the last drawn better than the last drawn salary we are expected to quote our expected salary am i am i am i right ibrahim see uh, when we are there must be always uh, we, we switch over for betterment only so keeping that in my mind i have to quote uh, i have to ask about the salary did so i answer it means that you yeah. yeah so mom it means that you you have to have a fair idea of how how how, how the range of salary per your position that you are going to stand right Yes, of course. Uh, that is also comes under job preparedness. See, for example, uh, based on my experience uh, and uh, uh, the position I applied, uh, there is some scale, uh, the slab, there is some salary slab, right? So, and uh, present market position also, I have to make a quick analysis. Accordingly, uh, I have to uh, negotiate for the salary part. Okay, so mommy, then the next question is uh, um during the interview and then they post a question like, Okay, Ibrahim, what extra thing do you bring on board to the company? How do you go by that question? Uh, could you repeat it? Uh, sorry, I couldn't get so, it properly. Yes. So what I'm saying is that during an interview, for example, you are interviewing me, I need a job from you, you you own a company, and then yes. dog. Doctor, you asked me that, Ibrahim, what do you bring on board? What extra do you bring on board? Do they know that you are applying for a particular position, but they want to find out whether you are a utility player, whether you are a utility player. They can use you in multiple places. So if they ask you that, Ibrahim, what do you bring on board? How should you go by that question during an interview? uh maybe uh the some the someone asked uh, whether i could go by the truth or should i uh, cook up some story the same way similar to that question here also uh, i would like to say mr ibrahim uh, though the question would be that way whatever is capable of uh, your potential that could be given as a kind of answer see our job is not simply to impress the interview panel 
maybe i could impress them uh, then uh, but if i am not capable then again i have to cut a sorry figure only so to avoid that what you are capable of what your potential you measure that and uh, if you could really really do something that that you can always uh, give as a kind of reply but uh, i don't rely on uh, fake uh, promises or which i am incapable i cannot quote that uh, as my uh, strength is that okay okay dog my next question is um can you show me the slight difference between a visa interview for school or for job and then a job interview uh you mean the, the, to the, the, yes is, is there is there any difference between a job interview and then interview for a visa to go to school is there any definitely difference there are is there differences yes Yes, definitely there are differences, Ibrahim. Uh, see, uh, when we apply for different positions uh, to different positions, uh, accordingly we have to trim our resume. See, every time for every job uh, without customization, we cannot submit our uh, CV or resume as such. If I apply for teaching job, then accordingly my resume has to be prepared. If I make it for uh, some uh, some industrial purpose, then it has to be. I have to uh, make some modifications. Uh, all right. Uh, so every time it needs uh, some trimming. That is, they, that that shouldn't be uh, something a ready-made one. Though it is ready-made, we are ready. We should uh, without making any alteration. It shouldn't be submitted to the employer. So from what you said, it, it, um, we should design resume for school and resume for job. All should be different formats, right? Yes. Okay, good. Format, I'm so not talking my, about the format, but the details inside the format is going to be different. See, okay. uh, see for example, uh, if you are going to apply for school job, then in the career objective, you have to talk about your teaching skill. You have to talk about your teaching skill. If you are going to apply for industry, then the, you need not highlight your teaching skill. There you have to talk about your administrative capability. Do you get my point, Ibrahim? So that yes. is the way you are going to make the difference between uh, your own resume, which you wanted to apply for two different jobs okay um now there is this trend of um dressing people dress go to work people dress go to interviews people and and i know that even your dressing can disqualify you at an interview mommy can you give us a practical way to dress as a gentleman and then two a practical way to dress as a lady for an interview uh see it varies uh, dress culture is a very very big topic and uh, just like that i'm i cannot pass a judgment that this is the uh, best outfit nobody can say that right so uh, it depends if i uh, uh, the job i apply and where i want see uh being an indian i would be more comfortable with sari but if i have to appear an interview for a foreign company then that that might not be appropriate so accordingly i have to dress myself so many things are there dress culture is a very big very 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 big area and uh, that's why i put it chart this way dress modestly that the outfit which makes you cautious, the outfit which makes you uncomfortable is not a power dress. All right. So what we can understand is once you're done with your dressing, you should not uh, cautious or you should not feel shy about uh, or you should not feel any anxiety about what you wear. All right. Thank you, mom. Thank you. Thank you, mom. And uh, yes, thank you for yes. the wonderful presentation and thank you for being with us today.
hope to see you soon in the next conference thank you very much ma'am thank you thank you so much for the opportunity and i thank the participants also to make the session very interactive by asking so many questions thank you